Hey, Sooner Football fans, this is your Sooner Football Fan Podcast. Today, from Austin, Texas, Corey Reedy is on with us. He's a lifelong Sooner fan, and we get into topics like Bob Stoops' retirement, Lincoln Riley effect on recruiting, New Wave 19, and recruiting from coast to coast. And we also talk about the new kickoff rules, what effect they'll have on the Sooners' special teams. Sooner Football fans is not associated with the University of Oklahoma, but we do have eligibility rights. Boom Hey, Sooner Football fans, you got Terry and Rob here. Boomer Rob. Boomer Terry. And all the way from Devil's Corner, the armpit of the United States, the land of burnt orange, I guess, any other um, hateful things you want to <laughs> say, we have Corey Reedy from Austin, Texas. Boomer, Corey. Boomer. How you guys doing? Fantastic. How are you doing? Doing well. So, uh, what you live down in Austin? Why did you lose a bet, or, <laughs> or <what? laughs> you, you know that that's really a good question? But uh, yeah, I was you know my first thirty three years I was raised in a small town in Oklahoma, so you know raised on Sooner football. My earliest memory being you know the eighty five Orange Bowl against Penn State, winning the national championship. You know, laying on my grandma's floor watching that game with my family and just going crazy so that's how i was raised i was raised in oklahoma football eight years ago uh job opportunity came came for uh my wife and i so we had to move to austin hmm. oh congratulations but ugh. <laughs> <laughs> well um it, it's it, it hasn't been that bad you know the last eight years they've been so terrible at football yeah, um, and and this whole area is just it's growing like crazy. So many California people are moving here, and actually people from all over. So it's not just burnt orange everywhere. Not just Texas fans. There's a ton of Ohio State fans here. It's 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 pretty crazy. All all different uh, walks of life in this little area. Yeah, I know. My son lived in my oldest son lived in Colleen for several years. He was in the military, and I used to gotcha. tell everybody yep. that's the you know the only thing I like about Texas is my son and daughter in law down there. And, and Tommy uh, Harris came out of yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And uh, you know, uh, uh, she's also a Texas fan, so that was kind of rough. But she she doesn't you know she doesn't talk much uh, right now. She's you know your typical Texas fan. She you know the only time she sends me anything is if you know they're beating us um, by chance. But most of the other time, she just it's just you know quiet as a church mouse over there. So. But yep. that's that's a good first memory to have is the uh, the eighty five Orange Bowl, Jamel Holloway and the Jamel Holloway to Keith Jackson pass. Yep. was just hmm. <laughs> funny. Seen it in sooner lore. Yeah. So uh, you said from a little town in Oklahoma. Where where at in Oklahoma? Chelsea, Oklahoma, northeast of Tulsa. North. Yeah, that must. I haven't ever heard of that town. So, um, but. Uh, I'm originally from McAllister. Rob's from Mangum. Mangum, Mangum. the big town of Mangum. <laughs> so, well, I had a college roommate from Mangum. Oh, really? Yeah, Trent Trussler. Must You must be a lot younger than I am. <laughs> 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 well, he was a little kid watching the 85. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody from uh, from Mangum knows pretty much everybody, so if I don't know him, then... They're they got to be a lot younger than me. I left as soon as I graduated, and I, I haven't been back a half a dozen times since. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, that was my senior year of high school, so that was a that was a good year um, for Sooner fans because uh, you know we lost. Uh, you know, that was the area we lost. Troy Aikman um, in the Miami game got beat from my by Miami. Yeah, yeah, and that was one of those deals, kind of like the Theismann, uh leg break they showed it over and over on uh abc and then i remember you opened up the sports illustrated and they had the always had that used to have that big picture of the week and it was his basically his ankle or what part of his leg was breaking and that was the big giant picture but that was the uh you know the rebirth i guess you could say of the wishbone you know we pulled uh jamel off the sidelines and threw him in there and the rest was history. So, great history, by the way. Yeah, great history. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
But before we get into a little bit of, uh, of the Sooner talk, I want to take a break from things right here and talk about the fundraiser that we're helping a family out. Um, it's uh, called the Team Kyler Forever Foundation. Um, Kyler Bonham is a four-year-old boy from uh, the Oklahoma City area who passed away last month uh, from a rare form of uh, childhood cancer. There's two things that we're doing, um, the Sooner Football Fans Podcast is doing for this family, is that we have a t-shirt sale and a uh, coffee mug sale that we're promoting through Facebook and uh, on Twitter. That's one. <laughs> yeah. not, not, I don't want anybody to confuse that with the yeah. two things. Yeah, um, that, the, <laughs> those are together. And um, it's the, the, the Lincoln Riley Twitter eyes, and it has hashtag OUDNA, and it has our uh, wonderful uh, cartoon picture on the coffee mug and on the shirts as well. But all the proceeds of those shirt sales are going to go directly to this family. Um, and we're not keeping a dime of it. Uh, they ask us for help. We tried to figure out ways to help. We had some people that ask us about if we were ever going to get any T-shirts or anything like that. And so we thought, well, this would be a good way to help raise some money. So we're trying to sell 50 T-shirts and 50 coffee mugs and to help them out. And also on June 21st from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Buffalo Wild Wings in Norman, which is um, our favorite place to eat um, here in Norman, um, they will be having a Team Kyler Forever night. Uh, we will be sending out on Twitter as well mobile certificates uh, on Twitter and Facebook. And if you go into the Buffalo Wild Wings in Norman and show that mobile certificate on uh, June the 21st, 10% of that sell, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings will donate to the family. And the family, what they're doing with this money, they're setting up a foundation, two, two purposes to set up a foundation uh, to help families in need. Uh, but first priority is that they still have um, funeral expenses uh, that they have not been able to pay and uh, that they need to get paid. So we're doing our very best to help them out. Every dime counts. Um, instead of asking people to donate money, we thought, hey, we'll ask people to buy something with, you know, something a little bit of, you know, OU on it uh, to show their fan, uh, you know, fans of the show or just Sooner fans, period. So. If you can, please go and uh, you know order a T-shirt or uh, come out to Buffalo Wild Wings on the 21st and uh, help this family out. So um, that's it on that. So let's get back into the sports talk. Um, Corey, Bob Stoops resigned a year ago last week. So um, that's one of the things, uh, topics obviously that we need to talk about this week is um, what effect or what effect or what, what was your response when you heard that Bob was resigning? I honestly was excited, not, not excited that Bob was leaving. I'm a, of course, I'm a Bob Stoops fan, but just knowing who the next guy was. And it's funny cause being in this, this area of Texas where I'm at and you know, the Texas fans and even the A&M fans, they have no idea who Lincoln Riley is. They had no idea he was off the coordinator. You know, as soon as Bob retires, they're all thinking, they're laughing, laughing at me. Ha ha, he lost. Oh, now you guys are in trouble. You know, it was a good run. And I laughed at that because I knew um, that Lincoln was the right guy too. And for Bob to do it the way he did it, um, you know, with new facilities, new office, uh, Baker Mayfield coming back, Heisman caliber quarterback with the team he had coming back to basically hand the keys to Lincoln. Uh, he still doesn't get enough credit for that. And you know, I went to the shoe last year. I you know, was lucky enough to be able to go to that game. And I don't know if I'll ever top that experience, but that was amazing being there for that game. And I was above the tunnel uh, down by the field when Baker planted the flag. I couldn't see through the players from my vantage point. I, I couldn't see exactly what was going on. I saw him running around with the flag. Uh, and then I heard all the boots. So I knew something had happened at that point. <laughs> but looking down into that tunnel and seeing Bobby Carroll Stoops down there and the players come off that field, the hugs, you know, between those players and Bob and then Lincoln, you know, that embrace between Bob and Lincoln at that moment uh, was a big deal. I mean, it was, it was huge. It was cool to see. And Bob, 
knew exactly what he was doing. Lincoln is the right guy for that job. He's he's a brilliant, brilliant guy, and he relates to these players. And it, we're we're getting ready to go on a fabulous, fabulous run sooner nation. So buckle up. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I think you know we're in, especially now that you see the recruiting classes that that is coming about. Um, you know that you know, I've always said here the last several years, I, I'm more interested to see what we do in three and four years than what we do these first couple of years. But well, if you're one's in the indication, <laughs> it's just going to keep getting better. But with what he's done recruiting wise, you know, in the short period of time that, you know, obviously being the offensive coordinator, he was involved in recruiting. Uh, but the re- recruiting class, he signed, slammed together for 2018. And then what he's doing for, you know, 2019 and 2020 it is, it's nothing but the elite of the elite that are coming out extremely early and saying, hey, you know, we want to come there. We're going there. And so I, th- I think you're right. You know, I, I've been concerned about, hey, what's he going to do in four or five years? Well, it's, I think it's pretty obvious what he's going to be doing in four or five years because we, we're building a talent pool that is – right now only rivaled or close to us is Alabama. And I think this 2019 team will eventually pass up everybody. I think we can only hope. So, um, but you're right. He's a genius, not just an offensive mind. I mean, just the way he deals with the recruiting. Um, right. You know. I mean, if you think about it, you know, when it comes to, to coaches on any level, whether it be the NBA, whether it be, Bill Belichick with the Patriots. The best coaches in the professions are the smartest guys. Right. And I, you know, I think about Brad Stevens, the Celtics coach. He is a genius. Uh, of course, Nick Saban, Bill Belichick, and I think Lincoln is right there on that playing field as, when it comes to you know having the the brains uh, of the operation as well. Right. And I think one of the things that we've always, you know we've talked about on the podcast is. You know, and there's a lot of Sooner fans. There was a couple of them today that put out on Twitter on some stuff. I was reading that, you know, the concern is is that we would become like Texas Tech. You know, we can, um, you know, score 70 points, but we can't keep our opponents from scoring 72 or 68. I don't want to play that kind of football. I don't, <laughs> you know, and I, I don't either. I don't think anybody does, and that's kind of the concern. But looking back here at recruiting, what we're starting to land now recruiting wise uh for not just this this coming year 2018 but the new recruits coming in at 2019 you know we just got two defensive end commits that are four star and they're massive you know six five yeah we we have to have a defensive line and the linebacker talent you know that's what we've been missing so yeah you're right lincoln's going to get that part figured out we're going to get those kids and then then look out yeah once it starts piecing together on both sides of the ball because let's face it i mean rob and i talked about this you know sitting around having chicken and beer going we're landing all these four and five star recruit ride receivers and running backs and tight ends where's our defense is there any defensive guys and initially there really wasn't any there wasn't any defensive commits which was causing me to have ulcers <laughs> <laughs> yeah no you're right and then all of a sudden it, that started trickling in you know and um you know and, and we get um it's michael michael thompson uh mike yeah michael thompson from st louis which was a end of the recruiting year steal you know basically nobody thought that guy was going to come to oklahoma maybe not even oklahoma and right at the end you know he stepped up and and came in and so there we go we got a four-star um defensive lineman that we were hoping to get to see some you know playing time this year but um apparently he got hurt or had been hurt um and it's going to miss out the 2018 season. But what they got coming in on, on defense is, is impressive right now. I think so. Yep. And, of course. Yeah, so this – I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say this, you know, the 19 class, the new way 19. So this morning I was looking at rivals. Uh, yeah, we're still sitting at number one with the rankings with 13 commitments. Two of the five-star commits, the wide receivers, of course, and then seven four-star commits. 
uh, for an average of 3.85 stars. You have Bama sitting at two with 14 commits. So they have one more than us, uh, but their star average is 3.79. So just a little bit behind us. So after that, when it comes to quality recruits, I mean, really, after Oklahoma and Alabama, when it comes to uh, per star average, nobody close except for you know, Georgia only has eight commits right now. I just see them. They're the sneaky dark horse that once once commits start rolling in there, uh, you know, Smart knows what he's doing. He's a great coach. So their average star ranking is 4.13 on rivals. So uh, lots of quality recruits so far in their class. When they get more in there, they're going to they'll jump up there. They'll be at the top, I, I bet, during the, or at the end of the, the recruiting cycle. Terry and I have been told that there's still a five-star out there that's – that's got our name all written all over him. So and because there is a set of eyeballs still out there. Yep. Uh, yep. And and it's just a you know, it's a matter of time, you know, and um so there there's another one sitting out there. You know, and we can all speculate who it is. Well, I can't because I don't, you know, I, <laughs> I don't follow I follow recruiting enough to be dangerous at it, but I don't follow it enough to know those sneaky little secrets other yeah. than uh, I hope it's on the defensive side of the ball. That's what I hope. Yeah, I, I think it probably will be, but you know, who knows? But um, you know, you, you look at. I'm sitting here. I've got it pulled up. You know the the commitments right now. You got Theo Weiss and of course Spencer. Um, I guess it's R.J. Henderson, and I'm sorry, R.J. Henderson looks like he's 35 years old. <laughs> Okay, so, yeah. you know, <laughs> dude, so dude, that's six what's one, really ex- 183 and he's got a beard, uh, goatee, dreadlock. Man, the guy looks like he's <laughs> that's what's so you know, I'm extremely excited about these these wide receivers coming in. You know, in this all offense, right. we've always, Oklahoma, we've always had the smaller, quicker, fast guys. You know, starting back with Mark Clayton and Ryan Boyles and now we have Hollywood, Sterling Shepard, even. We've always had those smaller guys, but as soon as we get Theo Weiss, 6'3", 205, yeah. before he hits our weight room, and yeah. you get RJ, uh, I see him at 6'2". Trajan Bridges is 6'2". Um, you know, we if you think back to that Rose Bowl against Georgia, they had some bigger cornerbacks out there. That yeah. Baker kid is a big kid, uh, and they can, you know, they can push the smaller guys around. But now we start getting these bigger receivers out there, and that's it's going to be extremely hard to hard to play defense against us. Yeah, and you look at you know Austin Stogner, you know tight end, um, six seven. Yeah, six seven, two hundred thirty pounds. Yeah, we got like a six foot five fullback. Yeah, <laughs> that I'm sure is going to be kicked over there to the the tight end some this year. But um, and you know it's funny Austin is just the opposite of RJ because I met Austin at the uh, spring game and he looks like he's twelve. He's a big old boy, <laughs> but he's got a big baby face and stuff. And I was like, you know, I'd recognized him when I saw him. And, but he, he is completely opposite of RJ. I mean, RJ looks, like I said, 35 years old. Austin looks like he's 12, but he's a stud, Austin is. Um, so and, speaking of looking old, um, so I'm not far from Hendricks in high school, where some RJ Piron came out of. Uh, and actually, a friend of mine was his running back coach at Hendrickson. So that was that a hard dude, job, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that that dude is a sophomore. Talking about looking thirty-five. I mean, he was grandpa when he was fifteen years old. Yeah. So ins- insane. Yeah, yeah. There was a a guy. Of course, he wasn't nearly. You know, he wasn't an athlete like. Uh, um, uh, oh, uh, who we were just talking about? Just one Samaj. Samaj, golly, that's my age is coming into play here. But um, this guy, he he was he grew up in McAllister. He was one of those dudes that um, when he was twelve and thirteen, he had a full beard and hair on his chest and shoulders. And his nickname was Cave- <laughs> his nickname was Caveman. That's what everybody called him. <laughs> he worked at the rec center, you know, during the summers and stuff. And he ended up, you know, it, it, that's just what you called him, Caveman. And I remember the stories about Samaj when he came in, everybody was wanting to know whose dad was there at OU. <laughs> Who, what dad, you know, had somebody, they thought he was somebody's dad. And, but that's one kid too, that was, you, you see the effects of, you know, the right diet and the weight room, that guy become a monster <laughs> over a couple of years. Pound for pound, he's probably the strongest kid on the team. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you heard, it, it's kind of like with Bookie now, you, you hear, as soon as they step on campus, you start hearing about him. You start. Yeah. You, we heard about Samaje way before the season began about him in the weight room. You start hearing the stories about it, and 
uh, those kids are the ones as true freshmen that can step out there and make an impact, which I think Bookie will this year as well. Yeah. Oh, I don't think there's a doubt, but I think Bookie's going to be, he'll probably end up being a two or three year captain, you know, um, if not a captain this year. I mean, if you've watched him, any of the films of practice, and if you watch him at the um, uh, spring game, you know, he pretty much, he's a leader out there, you know, uh, among the men, um, knows what's going yep. on. Even Stoop said, you know, he he's it's a rarity to have a kid that young uh, with the mind that he has, and it's a football mind. He he understands yep. the schemes, he understands where he's supposed to be, where everybody else is supposed to be, and that's something that we haven't had in that defensive backfield and you know, years. Sure yeah, you know, and but again, I'm like with with what's going on at OU right now. I mean, we're set to have a run. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I call it the, the Bob Stoops run, you know, from the first 2000, you know, on to what, 2007, 2008, we were always in the picture, you know, uh, if we weren't in the game, we just happened to lose, you know, what, four of them, I guess, for the national championship games. Isn't that right, Rob? Uh, LSU. USC, I don't remember losses. USC, <laughs> Florida. Florida. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We lost three, right? I don't losing. remember losses. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it, it was just the fact that we were there. It was always, it was going to be Oklahoma and somebody else. So, uh, and, you know, kind of like what Alabama is doing right now. Right now, until, you know, it's been Alabama and somebody else for, what, seven years now? And yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, whether they win it or not, they're always there. And, I think it's going to be really interesting when when Lincoln gets the building done, which I think part of it was already done when Bob left. But I think when it kind of falls together, um, it's going to be something special that people haven't seen in a long time. Um, and, I, and I'm saying more; it's going to be more dynamic than what Alabama is doing, I think. You know, let's talk about Alabama for a minute because normally – when a team rises like that that gets so saturated with talent, the top talent starts going, well, you know, I'm not going to get to play if I go there. I'm going to have to red yeah. shirt. I'm going to sit. I'm going to go somewhere else. Alabama's been able to sustain that type of player now for, God, how long? Ten years? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that, they, they keep... that, that, run, that run is insane. Yeah. It's insane. Just FYI, I hate Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you I, know, I, I hate Nick Saban. I was always a Bear Bryant fan back in the day. You know, I, the, the old school guy. You know, but you know, who, how can you not like a guy who got his nickname from fighting a bear at a bar at a you know state fair? So I think they're a bunch of liars. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was uh, speaking of Alabama. That was one of my other. You know, I, I was lucky enough to go out and go three to Tuscaloosa. Me and my wife. And some friends were in an RV and drove out there for that game. And those fans, we got into town at midnight, could not find a place to park because, you know, they all live in their RVs and they were all over the place. So, um, <laughs> this one guy, this, this one guy at midnight, you know, helped us find a place to park so we could get some rest before the, you know, that next day. Game day was there, you know, the fake punt. What, what an experience that was. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. But, you know, it's, you know, it's a, it's a storied program, but it, it's still just phenomenal what they've, you know, what Saban has been able to, um, you know, hold together, like Rob said. I mean, recruit after recruit, but that their proof, that's the proof that we talk about sometimes is that the elite want to go and compete with the elite. These kids that either turn down offers or, you know, in some instances we talked about this on a podcast the other day was some of these kids may decide, you know what, I'm going to come into Oklahoma. I'm going to be competing against four and five stars. I can go, you know, over here to Ole Miss or Mississippi state or wherever and compete against three and four stars, you know, maybe get to, to play a little bit sooner. You just don't know. But I mean, but when you hit, when you have that, um oh the not he man but the the what was it that J uh, Jason called it um uh, the alpha male mentality mm -hmm. is you you want to go compete with other alpha males because that's what's going to make you better and I think that's what we're fixing to see here at Oklahoma is all of these four and five star recruits are going are going hey I want to go there it doesn't 
doesn't matter who you got. I'm coming there and because they see what's being built and they want to be, be a part of it. And, yep. Yeah. And Saban's been really great. You know, his, his staff, he always has a top notch staff. He's got, you know, when it comes to recruiters, recruiters, um, if you look at payroll coaching staffs, you know, I think Oklahoma, we're somewhere around probably 12 or 13. It seems like Alabama's always at the top. Ohio State, Clemson, there's your, probably your top three when it comes to right. staff and what, what they're paid. So they'll, they'll have four or five great recruiters at Alabama, which does make a big difference. I mean, Kel Gundy for us, of course, has been our best recruiter for years. Um, Cooks is doing a great job. Um, we're always going to have an offensive line with beating ball. So he's also, he's a great recruiter, but that's something else. You know, we're a national brand too. Alabama is as well. That's something I like seeing with, with our coast to coast recruiting. We have this Cali pipeline going, we're getting kids out of California, but then bringing in, you know, Ruffin McNeil, Shane Beamer from the East coast. We're getting into that, you know, that DC area too. Where's right. that, that defensive end that just committed to us, Joseph Wheaty or Wheat, whatever his yeah, name is. Or, yeah. Um, and, yeah, Derek Green out of North Carolina, another big guy. So um, we got to hit Texas hard every year, of course. That's where we have to get top kids out of Texas. And it's only going to get harder now with Jimbo and A&M. But that's where we have to get most of our talent. Yeah, and I think we'll continue to because, you know, yeah, Jimbo at A&M. But, I mean, Oklahoma has a foothold in Texas that I think is – not surpassed by anybody other than the University of Texas. And I'm not just talking about current coaching staff. You know that the pipeline runs deep with alumni, friends of friends and friends of friends, you know, and coaches that used to be there, coaches that, that we could, we could, it wouldn't be good, but we could change the entire coaching staff and we would still have a pipeline into Texas. You know, yep. I mean, it, it's just whether or not the coaching staff works that pipeline which obviously that you know Lincoln and the staff has been doing because they're pulling all of the top you know the guys that everybody wants in Texas are coming to Oklahoma right now, and we pretty much pulled all their biggest stars. I mean, with the exception of uh, what Vince Young, he was from Texas, and yeah. some of those guys. But you know, Adrian Peterson and Tommy Harris, though, all those guys are from Texas. Yeah. Yep. And and it's amazing that not only are these guys, you know, well, one of my favorite lines is that um, when they were interviewing uh, uh, Bookie at the, I think it was the Army game, uh, All-Star game, um, they just, and it was before he announced, it was relatively soon before he announced, but they were just asking him about the teams. They were asking him to give one, one or two word answers, Okay. And, you know, he, it would be Notre Dame, you know, the, you know, touchdown Jesus, you know, Michigan, you know, the big house and, and stuff like that. When they got to Oklahoma, he said, Lincoln Riley, you know, that was his response. All the other ones was about, you know, the stuff around there and bookie goes, Lincoln Riley was his two word response. I like it to Oklahoma. And that's the impact yeah. he has on these kids. And then plus you get them into town. Okay. And. You know, it's always, I always say it's, it's got to be hard to bring a kid from Los Angeles or from anywhere into Norman, Oklahoma and go, you know, leave home and come here. But if they put them in a, you know, blacked out window vehicle and drive them straight <laughs> to the stadium, <laughs> I mean, there is no facilities that in the, in the country that are better than that. Mm. I mean, not just what we have on the inside, but when you look at it from the outside, and you see all the history that they're putting around it and inside it, it's, you know, you know that these, you know, 16, 17, 18 year old kids are just in awe of, of what they're seeing. And, you know, then you, then you throw in, you come up here on spring game day and every sooner in the NFL is stand, is standing there on the sideline, mm -hmm. shaking their hand. I mean, yep. it, it's, and that's, I think the genius of uh, Lincoln is, he knows how to make that pot look, you know, that pot of gold look like it's overflowing, which it is. So I was passing by Heisman Park just the other day, and uh, there's plenty of room for a lot of other, you know, Heisman <laughs> statues out there. I wonder if they say, hey, you know, hey, we got your room right yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but. Yeah, and, 
and Lincoln has personality for days too. I mean, he can relate to these kids. That's what that's what makes him so special. Yeah, and you know, he was you know he's kind of um, you know been the leader of the the new style of recruiting. You know, putting together right. you know the the announcements. You know, of the recruits this year we had NFL players going through cards. You know, um, yep. you know pictures of the kids and and their uniforms in front of their lockers that they, those kids can turn around and, and tweet out to all their friends and, hey, I was here, da 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 And then we were, we're the ones that – he was the one that pioneered that. Let's, let's give these kids something to talk about. And then, well, what do you know? Everybody else has to start doing that. And, yeah, you have to be on the social media game. So right. Lincoln gets that, and he's good at it. So yeah. good yeah. for us. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> so – but uh, um, now I did a deal on Twitter today. I'm going to throw this out here. We haven't talked about this, Rob. I don't think is uh, uh, the uh, Texas Tech University or a lot of the people down in Texas Tech are talking about this is Kingsbury's make or break year. He either turns it around or they're going to have to let him go, or they're going to let him go, um, or has a you know. You know, over 500 season. Well, I don't know what's a great season for them or what they consider a great <laughs> season down there. They got rid of Mike Leach and he was winning nine, ten games a year. Um, but let's say they let him go. Caleb's brought this up before at Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, Cliff Kingsbury to Oklahoma as offensive coordinator. What do you what What do you think, Corey? Uh I'm, 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 take, you, I'm taking you, that in. We have to crawl up off I'm the floor. That <laughs> yeah, I'm just not a I'm not a Cliff Kingsbury fan. Number one. So I mean, could I see it? Yeah, possibly. Um, I don't know if Lincoln wants to turn it with the reins anytime soon to his offense. I mean, it seems like he can handle. That was kind of the question you know, going to the last year too. Was can he handle being head coach and offensive coordinator? Well, I think he proved that he could. Right now. Down the line, I mean, possibly. I don't know. I I don't see see Cliff Kingsbury as a, as a good fit at OU. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I'm not about it either. I don't I don't see that fitting in very well at all. I sure don't. But it's something that you know. I don't I don't think he's going to turn over the reins of calling, but uh, calling the plays. But um, oh, the defensive guy we just got, uh, Ruffin McNeil. No, um, the uh, he's the Shane Beamer. Oh, good grief. No, what's his no. name? Hold on, hold on. Let me get up my... Diaco, the defensive... Oh, uh, Diaco. An, an, oh, yeah. The, yeah, Diaco, the analyst. Okay. Now, I don't really know what a defensive analyst does other than another voice in the ear or another voice of reason. He takes the it defense... Sounds like Alabama hire. And You're right. Analyzes it. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Rob. Uh-huh. So what you know, it may be. That's why they pay me the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it may, I, I'm thinking, you know, Kingsbury in that type of role, somebody that understands the type of offense that we're wanting to run, and that can be the other, you know, the other voice of reason in, um, you know, Lincoln's ear. You know, of going. You know, I know we've got two co-offensive coordinators. But what about that one person in his ear that goes, hey, no, 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 no. You know, look, 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 look here. Because we've talked about it on here, uh, and I think most Sooner fans, well, I'm not going to speak for Sooner Nation, but I know me and Rob, the uh, the Iowa State in the Georgia game last year, he took his foot off the gas, okay? And my deal is having that other person in here that understands the offense and goes, you know, hey, we're going to run, you know, uh, Sermon in the flats and da da da. Hey, no, 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 man. We, we need to go down and score again this one. And you know what? After we hold them again, or if we hold it, we need to go down and score again until it's done. I think it's a possibility that Kingsbury could be something like that, like an analyst position to where he, he wants that, you know, that bird in his ear that says, wait. Well, I don't know about Corey, but if. I'm not going to second guess Lincoln because yeah. he, you know he's obviously smarter than I am about it. But if if uh, if the dude from Texas Tech is dynamic in his recruiting and and he's a genius in his play calling, which I I'm not convinced of that. Yeah, you know from what I've seen at Texas Tech. But uh, you know if that if he feel if he feels comfortable doing that, 
then, you know, I got to be behind it. Yeah. But, I mean, that's all, you know, speculation. I'm, I'm you know, Mike Leach is able to, to walk around and call his own plays, you know, and he has that, what, little piece of scratch paper with a golf pencil that he, <laughs> <laughs> that he used. Drew a pirate up in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, 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 Patterson does it. You know, he calls the defense down in TCU. And, I mean, he's got the number one defense in, in the country a lot of the times or a top ten or it's, his defense is ranked higher than ours is every year. And a lot of sweat. Yeah. And a lot of <laughs> Good defense until they play us. Yeah, until they play us. And then he'll, he was the first one to tell you after the Big 12 game, hey, good luck. I mean, <laughs> there, that's a lot of offense to have to try to cover. So, um, But it's something, you know, to think about. I mean, I, I don't think Riley's going to – unless – I don't know even who would convince him that it, he would need to get somebody else to do it. I mean, you know, unless we're not scoring, if our offense isn't churning like we did last year or, and keeps churning every year, why would he change it? So, yeah. but those are, you know, good problems to have to sit here and go, hey, if a head coach leaves, you think he'd come be an analyst for us? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Corey, that's, that's how, you know, we're talking about Saban and Alabama and how they have a role, and that's basically what's going there. Every yeah. Decent coach that loses their job, they go become an analyst for Nick Saban at Alabama and <laughs> clean the toilets for free and coach. <laughs> what were you going to ask, Rob? And, and Lake is going to get there. Oh, yeah, he will. Yeah. I was just going to ask Corey, since he's down there in that part of the country, does he, uh, does he ever go to a game down there? And if you do, what's that like? <laughs> You will never catch me at a year. <laughs> well, that's the right answer, <laughs> sir. <laughs> uh, that's way too much nonsense. Now, I will admit, I did go to the OU Texas basketball game because I had third row seats, half court to see Trey Young. So, yeah, uh, from a guy good. I work with. But and then we ended up losing that game. That was <laughs> horrendous. So, do you work with a lot of Longhorns then? You know, it's these Longhorn fans are so fickle because there are some true bloods, you know, they, they wear their Texas gear. Most of them don't at this point, but I haven't been here when they've been good. So, uh, and unfortunately I do see Tom Herman, maybe turn that program. It's typical, you know, they have to get better at some point. And if I'm still here when they do, I don't know what that's going to be like. (laughs) The reason I ask is because we have to deal with, you know, OSU fans down here, and I just wondered what it was like <laughs> down there dealing with those yeah. fans. But I agree. Uh, I'm sorry. Tom Herman, I mean, last year the defense was not bad. I yeah. mean, it really wasn't. And so if they make some adjustments there and, they, you know, they, they, the defense is as strong as it was last year, I think they'll be better. Yeah. I mean, for, for our conference, for Oklahoma, we need Texas to be oh, good. Yeah. We really do. So, um, and I think it's cyclical. The SEC run – yeah, I don't see them going anywhere just because of ESPN and the backing they have there. But uh, I really feel that's why they get a lot of the recruits. But the Big 12's got to get better. I mean, Texas, we need them to be dominant uh, along with us so that we can carry this conference and get some some love from the national media. Yeah. Well, yeah, because everybody's getting heavy. <laughs> and bringing up, you know, with Texas getting um, – you know, supposedly getting better and, you know, they're putting out the Texas is back and all that stuff here recently. Here's a, uh, a question we're posing all of our uh, podcast guests, the fans. Um, and it's, um, comes from Caleb, you know, we should make him come on and do it, but you know, it, you know, he's 25 years old, you can't make a 25 year old kid do anything unless you're paying him and I'm not paying him to do this. So, <laughs> um, but sitting around the Buffalo Wild Wings is where we do a lot of our talking and, and, and hanging out. And Caleb brings up the, the question of, you know, well, if he came on the podcast or next time he comes on, or if he came on right now, he'd piss everybody off because he thinks Oklahoma's going to lose a game next year. And he doesn't know what game, but uh, he makes a good point is everybody lost a game last year. Everybody lost a game the year before that. When has been the last undefeated national champion? And Oklahoma has made it the, the – we're the, the proof in the pudding that you lose early, doesn't matter who you lose to, you win out, you win your conference, you're back in it, okay? 
I'd like to say this. In Caleb's defense, he has a little bit of mental disability. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, of course, we, we, we got to throw it on the other end. Alabama has proven the other end of the spectrum. They're Alabama, and it doesn't matter when they lose, they're still going to get in. Exactly. So um, that's a question we're posing. What If there's a game, you know, obviously we're all expecting an undefeated season. That's what Sooner fans do um, as, you know, it's our expectation. But – realistically looking at the schedule um what game do you think we could lose when why or if you had to choose which game would you want it to be um it's always you know the texas game is always the one that comes to mind it's not the one i'm going to choose but again that's why we need texas to be a really good team we need them back so that if we were to lose to a Texas and they're really good, it does, it's not going to hurt us. Right. If they're a six and six Texas team and we lose to them, that really hurts. So, right. but again, you know, they always, they not always play stuff here recently. They've really played the stuff in Dallas. And I hate to bring up officiating and complain about officiating, <laughs> but they do get a majority of the calls in that oh game oh, and yeah, big swinging calls. So, any close game with them in that, you know, in that stadium, you know, the, the stripes can turn the tide of that game in a heartbeat. So that one's always scary. But the first game, FAU scares the living hell out of me. <laughs> it really does. Because they have a great running back in, in Devin Singletary. He led the nation in rushing touchdowns last year with 32, had over 1,900 yards rushing. And I think everybody saw what our defense is doing against rushing at the end of the year last year against Georgia. So um, if that guy can run on us, keep our offense off the field, they have a lot of defensive talent back. They have a safety that was second in the country in interceptions last year with seven interceptions. Um, that team really does scare me because it's, it's, again, it's a, if Bob, I'm going to be honest, if Bob Stoops is our coach, we'd lose that game because it's, it's almost impossible to get the players up. It's Florida Atlantic. You know, they're not going to be up for that type of game. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see Lincoln and his motivation abilities to get the guys actually fired up for that game with FAU coming to town because they're going to be good. I mean, they, they're on a 10-game winning streak. They beat Akron 50-3 to in their bowl game, uh, and they're going to be coming into Norman to prove a point. Right, and Rob, make your point about our first four games. Oh, well, I just, uh, you know, I, I, this is not a <laughs> – a revelation by any stretch of the imagination, but those teams, those three teams, have this game circled since the day they scheduled it, right? Yeah. This game is yeah. their end-all, be-all. This is this is going to make Lane Kiffin, if he wins that game, or, or you know, it's just it's it's bigger for them than it is for us, right? For, and the same, and yeah. The, and then same you got Chip, Chip Kelly, Kelly era, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know what? What better way to kick off the Chip Kelly era than? to beat Oklahoma in Oklahoma, you know, the second game of the season. Then we got Iowa State in Iowa, okay? I feel well, sorry for them. <laughs> well, I hope, <laughs> you know. Oh, I, said, I said it earlier. Yeah, the, We're going to put a whooping on them this yeah, year. I'm yeah, telling you. Yeah. I feel sorry for Iowa State. And then We're going to be on a mission. And then you turn right back around the week after that, and you got to play the triple option army. And that was, it was not a bad team. They were a 10-win team last year. So they're they're not powerhouses, but there is no cupcake on our schedule this year. And I don't know why our our power ranking or schedule ranking isn't higher. You mean besides OSU? <laughs> yeah, you know, OSU drags us down. I'm sure, <laughs> but you know it, it's this ain't and an, an any one of those games, any one of those games can go either way. Oh, I and, agree. You know because. I think it, you know, we've shared this. This is our question of the week, so we've talked about it several times. But, um, you know, one of my those, it seems like Oklahoma the last several years has been, I'm going to throw my helmet out on the field and everybody's going to crap their pants and go, oh, my God, it's Oklahoma. They should. And <laughs> Rob says they should. <laughs> but yeah. instead, the players need to walk out on the field with that attitude that, you know, by the end of this game, you're going to be so sore, you're going to be crapping your pants. You know what I mean? It's a that's the that's the attitude Baker Mayfield brought. Right. So that's what's mm -hmm. going to be interesting now. Baker was the leader. Baker was the alpha dog. Um, you know, follow me, getting everybody pumped up. So 
now who takes that role. Right. I don't see Kyler Murray being that guy. No, he doesn't. I, I just... He just doesn't, that's not his personality. It's nothing against Kyle Murray. I mean, right. he's going to be great, but he's just not, personality wise, he's not that guy. Yeah, he's so he's on the baseball field, too. So. Yeah. So, you know, and, and it doesn't necessarily, necessarily have to be an offensive guy. It could be somebody like Bookie. Is he, is, is he going to yeah. have the respect enough from the players um, to be that type of leader? Or, you know, um, you know, Trey Sermon, I don't know if he has that. Uh, Rodney. Yeah, Rodney Anderson. Now, you know, Rodney Anderson, he's um, the head or the president of the, or was the president of the FCA uh, on campus. So, you know, maybe maybe there's a leadership quality in that, you know, I mean, as far as on the field type quality. Um, but right. you, you hit the nail right on the head. That's, that's what we're going to be missing more than what we're going to be missing Baker's talent, in my opinion. Right. It's, it's not – there's playmaking abilities because we're going to have somebody in there that can make play, that can make plays, okay. But Baker's deal was he was running down, you know, the, the bench or in the defensive huddles, you know, telling the guys, you know, hey, you know, hold them again, do this, do whatever it was, and they listened to him. And yep. we haven't had that in Oklahoma in a long time until Baker got here. So right. You know who's going to step up, or yeah, do we so, need somebody to step up like that? Or well, if FAU we shows up in September and punches in the mouth, you know right. that's who that's it's going to be interesting to see. You know who who does it, or uh, who's the calming guy? And you know, calm down, let's play football. We got this. Yeah. Or do we fold like cheap suit? I don't think we will. Yeah, but. I don't. I don't think. You know, and let's face it. I mean, last year as as good as we were was a learning. You know, a, a, you know, first first year on the job, you know, for Lincoln. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. there was a learning curve. I, I watched the thing. I think Sunday night, um, one of the local stations, and and they were going back to you know, this was his first year. This is when he got hired, and and one of the things he said in the first practice, it was out after the first practice. He goes, "There's a couple times I had to remind myself, ooh, I'm the head coach. I'm supposed to go break these guys down. You know, it, it, because you know." less than four months ago wasn't his job, <laughs> you know, right. when he got hired. So there was still that curve. And then, you know, like I said, in a game, he's, he's, he's the end all, you know, decision maker. And so, you know, <clears throat> we can all question everybody's decisions. We all do, you know, squib kick, uh, <laughs> 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 you know, three, four defense, yeah, three, four defense. <laughs> you know, you, you, you all got the, we all got those questions and, you know, another year experience or that, you know, last year, I guarantee you if we're in the semifinals and we're up, you know, 35 to 14 with 35 seconds left in the second quarter, he is not squib kicking it. He will never make that mistake again. You know, it was, it was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing the same uh, thing. I hate you, Terry. Yeah. Like, seriously, my stomach just dropped. Like, yeah. oh, it's a gut punch still. You know, I mean, unless, it, well, you know, Lincoln learned a lot, you know, that the second half of that game too. Lincoln oh, yeah. learned a ton from that game because Kirby Smart, you know, he talked about how they were thinking way too much on defense in the second half. They just came out, you know, forget everything we talked about, just play football. And right. Um, and I think, and I, th I think, think Lincoln thought we were going to run the same offense and go score another thirty-five on them. Yeah, and I think I think Lincoln did just the opposite. You know, uh, with the offense, it was he got too he thought about it too much. We need to do yep. this. Da, 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 da. No, man, you need to go out and turn Baker loose, and everybody out there on the field turn him loose, and just go for the jugular. And I just I. I just didn't see that in that third quarter, in the first drive of the third quarter, you know, and that's a learning experience that I promise you, I don't, I, you know, I'm not going to say promise you, I believe he'll never make again, you know, it, it's just. Hey, real quick, yeah. speaking of squid kick, do you think Shane Beamer can bring special back to our special teams? I hope so. <laughs> if anybody can, he can. <laughs> can we get some special teams I can box first few years? We used to. You know, with punt returns, and blocking kicks, and shake punts. You know, we haven't seen that in years. Yeah. That's what wins close games. Yeah. You know, that, that decision, to, and to catch it off guard, to do it at the, at the 
you know, the right time. But then again, that brings up another point with the changes in the, you know, kickoffs. You know, how soon is it going to be that they start changing the rules and, and the punt too? You know, the the new rule is on a kickoff, if it's, you can fair catch it if it's inside the 25 and they'll put it on the 20. And Are they wearing flags this year? Or is that <laughs> <the next? laughs> you know what the cheerleaders play? <laughs> You know, I mean, we talked about that with Benny and Buds dot com on here on their blog. There, you know, it's, I, you know, I don't, I understand, you know, why, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, we, we medically know more now than what we did twenty, thirty years ago. I get that, but you know, the game itself, I mean, I, I, I just don't, you know, or. Pretty soon, well, when we talk about it, probably by our, our lifetime, they won't have a kickoff anymore. And that's going to take a huge part of the game out, onside kick. You know, um, what if you score a touchdown with less than a minute to go and, you know, you're down two, you know, and you just give the ball to the other guys? <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it takes a lot of the planning out of the game. So I'm not sure. I mean, I know it's important. You know, special teams is huge, and we haven't had the special teams. But, you know, I think special teams is going to be regulated out to where it's really not much of the game at all. I mean, if you can fair catch a, a you know, a kickoff, you know, in, you know, inside, if it doesn't go into the end zone, you know, then there's no kickoff return. I mean, because every, every coach is going to tell kids, hey, if you, if you catch it on the 10 – we automatically get 10 yards. So don't, you know, fair catch it. Don't, don't run it back. Every coach is going to do that. Yeah. Which is why I think they ought to make the rule that move it back five yards to kick off. And if you kick it through the uprights, you get three points. (laughs) You know, if, if they can fair catch it, by God, you can make a point, you know, if if you kick it through the uprights, but you know, that's just part of the game that us old guys, you know, I'll say me the oldest guy and then Rob the second oldest. <laughs> but, you know, you look at it and go, wow. I mean, like I said, is Beamer going to bring back, you know, uh, Beamer ball and the special to special teams? Well, n- not to kick off because, I, I mean, wouldn't you do that if you were the coach, the special teams coach? You catch it on the 15-yard line or the 10-yard line, you fair catch it. You do not run that ball. Right. Because we already got 10 yards that we're going to get. You know, you take probably depends on who my return guy is. Yeah, but you're always running into the situation <laughs> of you know you could fumble it. Um, you know, it, it's a, it's a safe bet to, you know, uh, you know they they tried the halo rule and that was a joke. <laughs> you know, every time you got close to a guy, they <laughs> you'd think that a Tar- targeting still a joke. Yeah, yeah, targeting they they need to fix that rule. Um, you know, if they determine it's not targeting, then you don't kick the kid out of the game. <laughs> you know, if it's, you know, uh, and the targeting rule, again, I know it's a safety. And I know that really a, a lot of the style of play in the 2000s is kind of what brought the targeting because, you know, we don't wrap up anymore. You know, you don't put a shoulder through a guy's, you know, sternum and plant him in the ground. You elevate and... Superman ever, fly <laughs> at him. But when you see these guys get called for targeting when the back lowers his head or the back, you know, the guy's coming in at his, you know, rib cage and the guy starts going down and you hit him head on, that can't be targeting. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if you're full speed, it's hard enough to play defense. And if you're a cornerback or safety trying to keep up with these guys and you're going full speed, but now you're supposed to adjust in milliseconds to the way you're what you're leading with what body part you're leading with and how you i mean it's impossible yeah but the game ain't what it used to be you know (laughs) you know it's not but it's crazy that the athletes are better trained better nutrition bigger faster stronger but yet the rules of you know could you imagine, you know, what Dick Butkus would have played like if he'd have had the the weight and nutrition that these kids? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that guy going to kill? Hey, listen, Dick, you can't you can't just run in there and hit and just knock the crap out of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> he probably punch you for saying that. Yeah, I mean, just bring back the leather helmets. Yeah, <laughs> no face mask. 
you know, could you, I mean, imagine a guy, you know, like I said, like, you know, Dick Budkus or, or, you know, Too Tall Jones, those, if they'd have had, you know, the training, the off season training and nutrition and all this stuff that these guys have now, they would have killed somebody out oh, there yeah. because, you know, Dick Buckus may have. I <laughs> <laughs> he probably could come on the field now and might do it. <laughs> but but they don't make them like, you know, Dick Buckus and LT and, you know, Singletary, some of those guys. They don't, you yeah. know, they don't play like that. Yeah, anymore. they don't play they don't play with that abandonment anymore. Um with, you know, and and even, you know, um in the college ranks, I mean Bosworth, you know, Bosworth didn't wasn't big enough, strong enough or whatever in the pros, but he was he was a game changer with an attitude and on defense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> well, <nothing. laughs> no, what are you? There, I don't know what's going on in, in Rob's Listen, little mind. That needle helped him out just a little. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> All right. Just a little. Yeah, it did. You know, just wait. FYI. Trey Sermon is a beast. <laughs> <laughs> he just ran over to Ohio state kids and, yeah, so everybody out there knows the we got the Ohio State Oklahoma uh, replay on the TV in here in the studio. So <laughs> Rob's getting to relive that glory. Yeah, no offense, Corey, but I was thinking about setting this one out just so I could watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a glorious game. Yeah, and it's still I think one of the coolest stats out there. You know, we played them uh, four times, and no home team has won the game yet. You know, but yep. uh, yeah, we we beat Ohio State there. They t- twice, and they beat us here twice. So, um, I hate Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of hating. <laughs> Urban Meyer. <laughs> yeah, I don't like Ur- Urban Meyer. He's kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of he kind of uh, like an elitist. I think. What do you? What's your opinions on uh, Urban Corey? Yeah, I mean, I think he's a he's a really bright guy too. He's a great recruiter, of course. But you're right; he's just cocksure is the word that comes to mind. Yeah. I guess just seems arrogant. They I'm probably said the same things about Bob. Yeah, well, they did. You yeah. know, I mean, oh, of course. <laughs> you know, and that, you know, and that's right. the thing. You know, I, I tell people about. I've grown to kind of respect Saban a little bit because, I mean, for for crying out loud, I mean. Look what he's doing, I and Nick Saban. <laughs> <laughs> but but he's kind of loosened up a little bit. He'll still chew you out. But Nick Saban and and Baker Mayfield the, and, and Bob Stoops. Okay, let's just talk about him and Bob. You know, Nick and Bob is if they're not if they're your team's coaches, they're they're the greatest coach out there. And Bob was that way with uh, what well, has been that way the whole time he was here. But in the early 90s, up until about 2009, 2010, when we kind of got out of the national ranking push or the national championship push, everybody hated Bob Stoops. <laughs> the media, other fans, it was because he was winning. Yeah. You know, if he's your coach, you love him. If he's not your coach. Kind of like Baker. Yeah. If Baker's your quarterback, you love him. But yeah. if, you, if he's not, you know, he's a radical jerk. So... <laughs> But I think it's just interesting. Go Browns. Yeah, go Browns. You're, you're not a Browns fan, are you? I am now. now. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I am now. That's right. Uh, uh, hey, Baker's my all-time favorite. I mean, oh, yeah. It used, to be, it used to be Roy Williams. Um, he was a game changer as a, young, as a young lad. But Baker, just the attitude he brought. Yeah, uh, I, lo- oh, I love that kid. Yeah, you know, see, and I'm I'm a huge Steeler fan, so I can't stand you know. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> but so, what's that going to be like when the Steelers play the Browns? Oh, I, mean, I, I put no whole. You know, I I wish Baker the best. Okay, I really do. Except for in two games, we're gonna have to put a bet on that game <laughs> <laughs> because and we'll bring Sooner Lisa in on it too. And, and I'm I'm so she has to pay up when the <laughs> Cleveland Browns beat them <laughs> because that Cleveland played Steelers the first game of the season, so that's a loss. Okay, if he starts, he's losing his Come first game. Come on now. Okay, period. But what really upsets me is everybody put out today that you know Madden, the new Madden came out the new Madden commercial came out and it features Baker Mayfield. Okay. Of course it does. Yeah. And guess who he's playing? Steelers. The Steelers. The Steelers. And it has him juke 
and slip out of a taco from T.J. Watt. That will not happen. <laughs> Come on. I promise you. <laughs> They'll already be up like 35 to 7 or something. That will not happen. Baker's going to hang half a hundred on him. <laughs> you know, um, and I will. I, I really I, I wish he would have gone anywhere other than the Browns because I've said it before. It's not. It's just that organization has been in the pits for so many years. Nobody there is going to bring them out of it. I wish you'd went to the Houston Oilers. <laughs> <laughs> that shows your age, right? <laughs> Everybody out there is going who? Yeah, I was. So, I was hoping since you're a Steelers Jets. fan. Yeah, yeah, I got two. Since you're a Steelers fan, uh, <laughs> what about uh, you? Think Bookie could be kind of the next Troy Palmolive? Oh yeah, I can see that. Well, that'd be good. You know, um, I loved watching Troy Palmolive. Oh, that play. dude was just. He was always near the ball. Yeah, and then if you t- <laughs> you talk to him after the game, he had that soft talk. You know, yeah, I played really strong. It's like, dude, I would think this guy would sound like you know the Tasmanian devil after a game. <laughs> you know, yeah. But he was just so soft spoken and everything. And but you know that I think that's the style. You know that that bookie is because if you know, did you come up to the spring game or watch any of the spring game? I watched it. I didn't get to, I yeah. didn't make it up there. I mean, but they, the, you know, they had some blitz packages, you know, with, with Bookie back there. You know, they obviously he pulls up, you know, five, ten yards before he gets there. But you're like, okay, I like seeing this because they were at least practicing it. You know, no one, he knew where he was supposed to be and where other people were supposed to be. So, but I'm excited to see what that kid does. But, um, you know. I was I was worried that you were going to ask me about um, you know the quarterback. I can't think of his name now. Uh, Rudolph Mason yes, Rudolph <laughs> Mason no. Rudolph. I do not know. He why doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. I do not know why we re- you know drafted that guy. That the gives Pittsburgh a, Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> you know we, <laughs> Washington. I get, but you know I I'm, I was with Ben right after that. Is like why did we why did we recruit another quarterback? We don't need another quarterback. So. Landry's already collecting three million dollars a year carrying a clipboard for crying out loud. So <laughs> he's got the best job in the league. No, oh, I guarantee uh, you. I hate not even my promise. You. <laughs> but anyway, well, I think that's about it for this podcast. Rob, you got anything else you want to add? And I got it all out. You got it all. It. <laughs> Corey, anything you want to add before we go? I think I'm good, guys. All I appreciate right. it. Hey, well, thanks for being on with us, and that's the po- podcast for today folks so uh, listen to us next time uh, Boomer Rob Boomer Terry and Boomer Corey Boomer thanks for listening to the Sooner Football Fans Podcast if you want to be on the podcast and talk Sooner Football with us go to www.soonerfootballfans.com click on the how to be on the podcast tab fill out the form and we'll get you on Boomer Boomer